something in parallels and I'll ship you whatever you need free. Wow. You can give it away. That's, That's awesome. huge. That's awesome. That's huge. He said we've got people that want to give us money and say get this in the hands of people. He said if you do a lesson on Christian evidences or something that will parallel tell me what you need and I'll ship it to you. That's, That's huge. That's people wow. on our program we give a, we don't ask for money as you all know. We give everything away free. It's really cool when you talk to radio stations and say we're not going to bug your listeners for money. They can listen. What they get is free. And uh, and so that's very huge. And the reason we're able to do that is for folks like, well, many of you. Uh, here in Union Grove, Brother J.W., Brother Eugene, from the time I said we were staying in Cleveland, here's what we're going to do. Uh, they have faithfully supported our work. Uh, Big Spring, each year we receive something from Big Spring, and that's huge. Uh, Sid, we're always appreciative of that. Uh, Gateway came on, it's been dedicated from the start, thankful for that, and uh, just grateful for the for the commitment of uh, congregations and their big help and, and the things that we're able to do, and then also trying to be a decent steward of what we do have. Uh, matter of fact, I'll share this with you quickly, and I know you're not here for International Gospel Hour News, but you, you place to support our work. You need to know what's going on. Give you sign. Um, I got a uh, offer to go on television in Central Florida on a station out of Orlando that hits about 3.2 million in population. It covers some ground over the air and cable. It is a religious channel called Super Channel 55. They had a slot on Sunday morning that was a decent price, so I went for it. I thought, hmm. And uh, I went for it, and they had already filled it that quick. But they offered a slot on Saturday night at 8.30 at the same price, which was about 40% less than what it would be in the evening. Now, the guy that I work with television advised me that Saturday night is viewing night is not too bad. Now, research I've done, Saturday night is not the best night in the world. But I went and I said, look, I'll cast a line out there and, and see what we can do. And uh, you see how it goes. And I'm thinking, okay, and how do I pay for it? And I got to look at it, and I'm not getting traction in the Dallas market on radio. So I'm going to pull from the Dallas market and go TV there, and what I got left over, I was able to get on a channel up in the Quad Cities, Illinois, and Indiana, where we're not on the air. 8.30 on Sunday morning for a whole whopping 60 bucks a week. I thought, I can't let that one go. <laughs> and so, whereas Dallas radio is 300 a week, 
I mean, it's like markets. The bigger the market, the the higher the dollar, you know, and the station. And I thought, well, I'm not getting much traction there. So I got 250 in Orlando, and I got 60 up here in the Quad Cities in Illinois and Indiana where we're not on the radio. So 250 and 60 is 310, and Dallas is 300. I'm going to find that $10 a week somewhere. <laughs> I think I can track that down. <laughs> and so, so it's a constant. You want to be a good steward of what you do. And you find some areas not as productive, so you go into areas that can be. And I talked about that this week with Chris Lyon of the Search of the Lord's Way and Joey Farrell of Gospel of Christ. And, you know, just Mark Teske drops some markets. And, you know, we talk and we share and we see something that can help each other. There is no competition between lighthouses. And if we can help one another, we do. And what's very unique is I walk all around Free Hardman and I see podcasting, I see television, but I see one Brotherhood Life radio program. Care to guess what it is? Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of local preachers that do their own programs. That's great. More need to do it. But it's good that we can help other places with our broadcast and, and uh, just thank you. So, all right. Now, you will not be tested on any of that. Uh, if your uh, if your uh, if your congregation supports our work, you will get extra credit in my course. I will see to that. <laughs> you're right, you're yeah. Oh, you'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll let you have it. And uh, so anyway, let me reply here. I've got a three-way conversation between Renita and Jenny. Let's pause for a prayer as we begin. I know we pray at the end, but I've got a reason to begin with prayer tonight. So we pray with you. Father, thank you that we can share the good things going on in the kingdom. And thank you for every soul in this room and what they mean to the congregations where they attend. Thank you for all these good works and bless them and strengthen them. Be with their preachers, their elders, where applicable. And Father, help them as they press onward. Thank you for their desire to be in this class to grow and let them serve in the congregations where they are. Brother Jackson has to have some tests tomorrow at Memorial. We pray that good will come. And Father, that things can be addressed as needed. We pray for Jim and Kathy. We miss them tonight. Thankful that Jim's home. We pray you'll watch over them and be with them. We pray you'll be with Denise. And pray you'll be with uh, folks in our local specific works that need our prayers and Help us to serve and to minister where we can. Thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. We're going to go probably a three-part. Could be a four-part. And as you know, on the far side, we're going to begin tonight with some topical thought within the book of Psalms. Let me pause here. In the center, the little heart says you need a handout for Psalm 67 through 75. They're back on the... Uh, uh, the, the round piece. I appreciate Lauren's help in getting those ready and her assistance. And so uh, you'll need that. We're going to fill in some blanks here in a little bit. The more I kept working on it, the more I thought it'd be easy. Try something a little different. When we talk about songs, there are different types of songs. Now, we've seen songs vary even in our study. Some are songs of praise, of plea, Father, help us. Psalm, like Psalm 51 last week, David's plea for forgiveness. And as we look at that, there are different types of psalms. The first one there, psalms that are called psalms or psalms of ascents, which means that the title of the psalm indicates that these would be psalms sung by pilgrims when they traveled from their home to the Jerusalem temple or some other place to worship. Could be they were sung by the people or their worship leaders as they ascended the steps of the temple in Jerusalem. A psalm of ascent, if you will. Jerusalem up high the level. Look at Psalm 122, and you get an example of a psalm or a song of ascent. 
When I noted that was of interest of how they would a song as they ascended the steps of the temple. May I ask a question? Do you prepare yourself for worship before you go? Do you prepare on Saturday? I've exhorted people that uh, Saturday is the time to get ready and to be prepared. One of the frustrating things I have is when I don't plan what I'm going to wear on Sunday. And until I get to step in the closet Sunday morning, that's not my time. I get frustrated. And it's always good to prepare on Saturday to make life easier on Sunday. Especially with little ones and young mothers and parents and to prepare on Saturday to be ready on the Lord's Day. Uh, to plan to arrive, not on time, but in plenty of time. To settle down, to have our mind prepared. I am reminded of a congregation in Gillisville, Tennessee, when we worshiped there, that they used to dim the lights, not cut them down, but dim the lights, and that told us it was time. And Brother Jerry Ashley would get up, a charming brother who could do announcements beautifully, welcome people, put you at ease. And then he would say after the announcements, uh, now let's take a few moments of meditation before our worship. And then Jerry would sit down. And then as the lights would ease up, Danny Bowman would get up to lead our first hymn. I will tell you, folks, it set a tone. It lets you think. Now, I love fellowship, but I've seen you try to call people down and rush to the seats, and it's just something to prepare our minds. A song of ascent was believed to be sung as they were on the way to the temple, which would put the mind set just right. Now, how about the second one of a song of lament? Uh, these can be an individual cry or the plea of the community or congregation. This is where one laments to God on behalf of himself or of everyone. If you want to look at an example, we'll go backward to Psalm 85, and you can see the plea uh, of, the, of, the, of the community, if you will, lament. Or the congregation, Psalm 85. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. You brought back the captivity of Jacob. Jacob, you've forgiven our iniquity. You've taken away all the wrath. Turn us, O God, of our salvation. Cause your anger toward us to cease. Then you come down to verse 6, one of my favorite texts. Will thou not revive us again? that thy people may rejoice in thee. So that's an example of a lament or a song of lament. Uh, the song, O heart bowed down with sorrow, O eyes that long for sight. And then in the chorus, the plea of Jesus from Matthew 11, come unto me. Beautiful song. It is a song, and uh, these songs uh a lot of concerns, illness, slander, physical threats, apprehension, some things that we have read about already. Uh, they were used in formal worship, in singing. Uh, our songs that we sing vary. I, I mentioned a song of ascent, uh, of preparing ourselves. Um, what about a song that keeps us reminded of ascending or living toward heaven? I'm in the glory land. Uh, beautiful song. Third one, some songs of thanksgiving. And of course, these are songs that praise God, that celebrates a deliverance of what he has done for them, gratitude for his victory. If you will pick up from Psalm 85, and now let's go back to Psalm 107, here is a good example of a what's called a community or congregation as it begins the book number 5 of Psalm 107. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. That's verse 1. Uh, verses 8 and 9. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
He satisfies the longing soul, filleth the hungry soul with goodness. 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men and a reminder. Verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Y'all want to do 31 with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And you see how the psalmist comes back and comes forward and he tells us of how God, how we are thankful for him. And so uh, these are just, uh, again, some topical things that we're going to try to hit a little each week of different times of psalms. Uh, a sense, lament, and thanksgiving, and we'll see some others as we continue on our study. Anybody with a question or a comment on any of these? Those taken for credit, chances are you may see that again on the test. So, go we'll check your notes and see what we've got there. All right, you ready to fill in some blanks, folks? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't get too excited. <laughs> Oh, are you ready to fill in some blanks? All right, here we go. All right. Now, Psalm 67 through 75, our section tonight, I thought it would be well if we just, uh, the, the more that I look at it, sometimes I can find two psalms that would stand out. Uh, sometimes, um, well, sometimes I cannot, or I get to look and think, you know, there is something there in each psalm, and, uh, and, and to see something there. Now, I will tell you that the letter P will start every one of these words, so just to let you know. How about Psalm 67, praise that is worthy. Praise that is worthy. In this brief psalm of seven verses, or seven stanzas, if you will, there are two salahs and four praises. And so the selah is there to pause. What have you just read? What have you just sung? And then a reminder. And so we find of the praise that is worthy. Two selahs and four praises there. How about Psalm 68? Power that is frightening. Power before, power now, power that is to come. Now, we're going to look at Psalm 68 a little bit more in depth. That's one of our psalms tonight, or that is our psalm for the evening that we'll look at in a little bit. Uh, if you have a King James Version in verse 4 of Psalm 68, let me point this out, you'll see... Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah or Jehovah, that is a brief Hebrew writing meaning Lord. Your translation may say Lord, it may say Jehovah. Would you like to comment? What do you have there? The heavens by his name, what do you have? Job. I have Jaw. Jaw, okay. But down at the bottom it has uh, a little note there that says uh, chapter, or Psalm 68, verse 4. Jaw equals Lord. Yeah, Lord. And you know, there are people that want to follow Christ, but are they referring to him as Lord? Are you with me? There are those, is Jesus the Lord of our life? People want to follow Christ because he's a good man, but if he's your Lord, he controls your life. He's your master. We are his disciple. He's Savior and he's Messiah, but he's your Lord. An interesting study of that word. Very interesting. Um, so anyway, you'll find, uh, I like verse 6, first part, God sets the solitary in families, interesting word, that word solitary, God sets the solitary, could also mean lonely, which that sounds a little strange, but not really. Take a look at the rest of the psalm. Sometimes the psalms, the verses, the stanzas, explain a little bit more. God sets the solitary or the lonely in families. You have another word? Solitary or lonely? You have another word there? 
him a lonely family? Save the context. He brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Let me tell you something. Would you like to be brought out in chains? Would you like to have a rebellion reputation? Or would you like to have a little solitary or a little lonely quiet moment in your families? Families with some lonely or solitary or quiet times sure is better than getting a phone call that your child has been arrested. It sure is better than the tragedies that can come forth. And you know, did not the psalmist remind us to be still and know he is God? And remember what Moses told the children of Israel when the water was before them and the Egyptians were behind them? What did he say? Be still. Stand still and know him. See the salvation of the Lord. See what's going to be. You know, folks, sometimes we need to slow ourselves down. For example, somebody asks you, they'll call you, what are you doing? What's the first word you usually say? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> but you're doing something. You know, what are you doing? Nothing. Yes, you are. You're doing something. Talk to me. You're talking to me. That's right. You know, there are times that Renita and I choose to sit down and maybe watch a program together that we like or watch a basketball game that we like. We need that time together. Sometimes we book ourselves way too much. And I love when we look at the psalmist, you know, slow those things down. How about Psalm 69? What about the provisions that are great? Oh, that's a powerful psalm. It is how he provides comfort for his people and correction for those who oppress his people. Want to see something good? Look at verse 20. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. What biblical character comes to mind? Look at those words. My heart is broken, full of heaviness. For comforters I found none. Who to remind you of? Jesus in the garden. Job. Actually, Job. Okay. But it would also apply to Christ, who had those at the garden too. But now look at verse 21. And then, Chris, I think we can come back to your answer. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. I suffer on the cross. And so provisions that are great. God provides comfort for his people, correction for those that oppress his people. How thankful we are for God and how he helps us. Somebody says, well, I faced one of the most trying times in my life. I had this, I had that, and I don't know that God was there. Always remember, y'all, the teacher is always the quietest when the tests are given. God is always there with us. And God always provides for us what we need. We may not know it at the time. You all know that beautiful story of the footprints of the sand. I look back over my life, and I noticed in my most trying moments, there was only one set of footprints, but there were two otherwise. And I said, Lord, why did you leave me during my most trying time? He said, oh, no, my child, during that time that I carried how many of us can look back at some of the most trying moments in our lives and we're thankful for the Father? We're thankful, first and foremost, for the God who was with us. Second, we were thankful for the brothers and sisters in Christ who were there for us. Third, we're thankful for family that helped us along. And fourth, we're thankful for friends that helped us as well. I'm going to tell you, it means a lot. God's provisions. Psalm 70, only five little stanzas. Promptness that delivers. Begins with haste. Ends with haste. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh God. Let God be magnified, verse 4. I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me. The psalmist knew to cry out unto the Lord and promptness that delivers. God provides. 
Psalm 71. Oh, beautiful psalm. Places that one may stand. Places that one may stand. In the verse 1, I put my trust in the Lord. Verse 2, deliver me in thy righteousness. Verse 3, be my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Not only is it a strong habitation, but verse 3, you're my rock, my fortress. You know, folks, there is a habitation built by the living God. For all of every nation who seek that grand abode, they should put that to a song. <laughs> Verse 5, thou art my hope, O Lord. Verse 7, thou art my strong refuge. There is a place of refuge for every troubled soul. Verse 14, I will hope continually. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will show forth thy righteousness, thy salvation all the day. I know not the numbers of the Lord. I'll go in the strength of the Lord my God. I love verse 18. I've used that in funerals of faithful Christians that live good long lives. When I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have shown thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Through the years I've had people say, Jeff, I can't do anything I don't feel like I'm doing any good. I can't serve and I can't give. Now, so let me ask you something. Are there people that help you along the way? Yeah. Is there times that you need help along the way? Yes. Well, you're still serving because you're allowing them to grow to be the servant that you are. Folks, let us never be in the point to where we say, well, I don't want to be a bother to anybody. Be a bother. You're not a bother because if somebody says, I will help you, allow them. Y'all are going to laugh at me when I tell you this. But if I'm somewhere and somebody says, Brother Jeff, let me know if you need anything for International Gospel Hour. Oh, boy, you just said it. <laughs> you just asked. Jeff, have you got something going on? As a matter of fact, I do. I need $10 more a week. <laughs> you know, I'll keep a project going. It's like, Jeff, is there something you got? Because people do that. Here's why. They have, studies have shown that in the working force that people look for projects more than long-term commitment. And when they conclude that project, and that's the generation we're in, when they conclude that project, they're ready to go to another project. And it keeps that production going and helps overall. Saw an interesting fact today what they call Generation Z or the Centennials, those from ages 8 to 25. They were born with iPads in their hands. Do you know when they get their news today? From social media. Do you know why? Not only are we over the air, but we have a push in social media and with phones like this where people will see clips and information and teaching and things of that nature of the gospel, it's because we're meeting the need of the world. There's all kinds of things. I saw today, you know, I told you about the channel we're going on. These are channels that have over-the-air capabilities too, where the vast majority of people keep cutting the cord for television. Also read where the Super Bowl sold all their ads. We got preempted because of Kansas City going to the Super Bowl, and they will bill us for that week we're not on the air in Topeka. I wrote back to God. I said, tell them, look, I'll pay them 100 bucks for 15 seconds during the Super Bowl. I think a 15-second commercial, that'd be no problem at all. Join me here Sunday, 8 o'clock, Fox 43. See you then. I said, never heard a word back. I wonder why. 100 bucks for 15 seconds? I thought that was fair. They did. You ready for this next P? Y'all gonna laugh at me when I put it up here. Folks, I had to pick a P word that worked, okay? <laughs> I can do that. You ready? Mm -hmm. 
Anybody care to take a stab at pronouncement? Prodigious. 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 Prodigious, as the old world would say. Now you're thinking, okay, prodigious actions overall. Prodigious actions. Now when you look at that word, it is a word and the whole song reminds us God's still in charge. And when you take a look at that word, it means enormous, immense, huge, gigantic, tremendous, amazing, stupendous. You don't have to write all this down. Astounding, wondrous, miraculous. And you look at Psalm 72, we are reminded God is still in charge. How powerful he is. Sometimes we worry about this whole world. Don't forget, God is still in charge. All the kingdoms of the earth are under him, Psalm 417. You ever wonder about election cycles? Let me say this, folks. God in his power may raise up a Cyrus who is sympathetic to the people, or he may rise up the Saul because everybody is hollering, raise us up a king like the other nations. And sometimes God gives up answers to remind us that we want to desire the Cyrus is more than the Saul. That's it. He's still in control. Psalm 73. Prosperity that is not portion. Prosperity that is not portion. Now, meaning this. Certain prosperity you do not want. The psalmist said, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But in verse 26, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So we want to have the prosperity that God provides. He gives us the portions that we need, not the prosperity of the wicked. That's earthly gain. Here today, gone tomorrow. Okay, is that word prosperity or prosperity? Prosperity. Hey, Prosper. Prosper. Yeah. Prosper. Prosper with I-T-Y on the end. Prosperity. There, uh, third verse 3 as well. Angel. So, and, and I'm sure you've noticed this far that a lot of the Psalms we do find some repetitive, repetitiveness of the psalmist. That's okay. Because we are reminded over and over and how great our Father is. Psalm 74, please, P-L-E-A-S, please, that are affirmed. Please, that are affirmed. The plea that the psalmist makes and in verse 22, Arise, O God, plead thine own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproacheth thee daily. So here are pleas throughout the psalm unto God, but then a reminder or a plea unto God to plead his own cause. Stand forward with what you have, God. Let the foolish see what you have. The final. Psalm 75. Protest that are not affirmed. Protest that are not affirmed. Those that reject God, they protest against Him and the recompense that comes upon Him. Verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup and the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same, for the dregs thereof all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Does that remind you of any book, or any other book in the Bible? Give you a clue, written in a figurative language. Uh, uh -huh. Jeremiah, book of Revelation. Sorry. Jeremiah will plea, but I think of how the vials in the book of Revelation how he poured out the vials upon the wicked. He brought that punishment on. He poured out the vials, or he poured out the pots of what would come upon them. And he wants to remind them that God, again, these are protests that are not affirmed. 
they will reject the recompense that comes upon them. I, verse 4, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up your horn or your authority, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. I'm telling you, don't do this, because in the hand of the Lord, there's a cup of lines red, full of mixture, etc. All right, any comments or questions or Thoughts or anything I need to back up. What did you say on prosperity on 73? Prosperity that is not portioned, which means the, the proper or the prosperity that would be proper. We don't want the portion of the wicked, BJ, verse 3. We'll take the portion of the heart that God gives the strength there. Verse 26. Prosperity that's needed and necessary. Would be, yes. That's the prosperity that would be needed. Uh, matter of fact, back in Psalm 73, look at verse 13. Verily I cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should have been against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17. So I decided I will just stay home from worship because I'm not doing that well. Until I went into the sanctuary of God that understood I am there. Jeff, I can't go in there. It's too painful. It reminds me of my mother. If your mother was living, what would she have you to do? She would say, I need to be in there. That's right. Will you trust in the God of all comfort that not only when we come to it, he brings us through it. And if you will but enter in and worship, it will get The day after my dad's funeral, I worshiped that next morning. There were tears in my eyes, but I sang praises to my God and reached out for everything I could get that he provided. And I remember, I remember Corrine, my brother. Many of you knew Corrine. She said, when my mother passed, she said, going into worship the first time without her was the hardest thing. She said, but I stayed with it because I knew God would take it. Uh, the Psalms, they help us tremendously. Can we go back to Psalm 68 for the remainder of our time? Now, Psalm 68, I have an outline over here on the right side. Power over enemies begins. You may want to know beside verses 1 and 2 there, Numbers 10, 35, and 36. It's a wonderful thought. And in verse 36 of Numbers 10, Return, O Lord, the many thousands of Israel. He has the power over enemies. Verses 3 through 6, A place within the righteous. We're glad, verse 3. We rejoice, twice in verse 3. Sing to God, sing praises, twice. Stole him who rides on the crown by his name, Yahweh of God, the Lord, rejoice before him. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. We're talking about the Psalms, a book of Psalms. Sing praises. I have to give a nod to songs that are placed on PowerPoint does seem like it helps the singing. People are watching. They're looking. I encourage people where you still sing with song books, hold your book up. You may have to lean it on the pew in front of you. It helps project the voice. You sing. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. We sing so we can hear one another. Your congregational singing can improve with the smallest things. 
First of all, when you sing, lift up your voice just a little more. Raise your voice up just a little more. Not a lot. Don't yell it. Just sing it. But raise your voice up. Sing out a little more. Have a songbook up where you can project. That's hard for some folks. Little hands. But sing songs. Project and sing the hymns. I will tell you, when people, you know, when I will extend the invitation, I like looking at the eyes of people. I mean, I'm looking for people to respond. I'm not going to get up there and deliver a lesson and put the invitation and think, okay, nobody's coming forward. Let's go to the formality. No, 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 no. I'm looking for responses. It used to be I could look in the eyes of people. And now everybody's doing this. Which is fine. They're singing. That's fine. But put, the, put on our song. Sing how songs are to be sung. I mean... Sometimes I've heard when the road is called up yonder a little slower than it should, and boy, I wished it would have been. Not singing the song. I wish the road would have been called up yonder. I mean, that's a joyous song. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more. That's a joyous song. But, blow in the grave, you buddy. It's a little different song. How it's presented. Song, certain songs should be sung with that wonderful feeling, but all songs should praise God. Just like a song of ascent, song of lament, song of thanksgiving. Oh, sacred head, beautiful song. It needs to be sung with passion, thanking unto Christ, and singing with our hearts. You see, there's a place within the righteous because we sing, we extol, we praise Him. Now, verses 7 through 17 is what's called a perusal of the past. We're going to talk more about that in a moment from verses 7 through 10. Especially verse 7, when you march through the wilderness, say, la, got to think on that one. So we're going to come back in a moment because I want you to see Psalm 68 in a little different light. And then promises that continue take us through the rest of the chapter. When you look at verse 18, when the psalmist said, You have ascended on high, you have led captivity captive, you have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Showing God's great power and promise unto his people. There is a prophecy there that looks familiar, and that's Ephesians 4 and verse 8, of the provisions for the early church. The gifts of the Spirit to teach and to affirm the Word, Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. To affirm that God and his, those leaders, those followers, affirm with the miraculous of what they did. Verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, Selah, think about that. The New King James Version uses a similar term, benefits. The, e, the English Standard Version, blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. Well, how does he bear us up? He provides the benefits to keep us going. The NIV says he daily bears our burdens. So there's nothing wrong with that thought because the idea of God is providing for us constantly. Bearing our burdens reflected in the New American Standard Version as well, meaning that the benefits God loads us, He holds us up, He gets us through, He helps us. Now let's spend the remainder of our time, the next seven minutes or so, thinking about Psalm 68, 7 through 10. Now, the Psalms, as you remember, is a book under the books of poetry. They are books of, um, of, of psalms of praise to God. And it would not be a book of history, but you and I have seen the history of Israel as a major component in the Psalms. He keeps referring back. We noted this in an earlier class. And I'm going to put this probably on final exam, and it will probably be worded something like this. What does God remind us of often in the Psalms concerning his history? Well, 
The answer is he reminds us of his greatness and what he has done for his people. He reminds us of his greatness. So when we look at Psalms as a book of history, which it's not, but there's plenty of history there to remind us of God's greatness. How about just a few highlights? Take Israel and the creation. Psalm 33, 6 through 9 speaks of God's great creation and how he was very fond of Israel, Psalm 104. In the patriarchs in Psalm 105, Abraham takes center stage, if you will. Isaac gets a brief mention. Joseph is, gets a brief mention in Psalm 105. It refers to the patriarchs. Here in Psalm 68, we see mention of the Exodus there in verses 7 through 10. When you march through the wilderness, the earth shook all that you provided unto the people of God. Of the Exodus, their joy in deliverance, Psalm 114, Psalm 136. Psalm 78, 105 and 106 refer to the Exodus. Crossing of the Red Sea, Psalm 114. And so when you look at, again, the book of Psalms is not a book of history, but it affirms God's greatness. Here's another thing that stands true. It affirms the accuracy of the scripture and the inspiration of God when the psalmist will say, well, we've already read and it's accurate. Guided by the Spirit. Again, Psalm 68, Mount Sinai is mentioned twice. The wilderness is mentioned. Psalm 78, thorough of history. Uh, Psalm 106. Talks about the punishment for God following the incident with the quail in Numbers 11. How about the conquest crossing of the Jordan River? It's alluded to in Psalm 114. Life in the land. The memories mentioned in the Psalms include many victories over the enemies of God's people, Psalm 83. The monarchy, or the one king whom the psalmists were interested in most, was David. Psalm 78. We saw in one of our questions about Psalm 137 a few weeks ago about the exile and the return. It was decided that uh, Psalm 137 possibly was composed while they were in captivity. Psalm 107 believed to be written on the verge of their return. I give a nod to my brother in Christ, Sam Wilcutt, for such a good thorough look of Psalms as history. Very interesting. You made the comment here, while the Psalms would not be an adequate source for Israel's history if taken by themselves, they are nevertheless a great enhancement to our understanding of this history and the God who orders it. So shows the power of the inspiration of Scripture how the psalmist goes back through inspiration and says, look at this, look at this, and shows how great our God truly is. All right, folks. Thank you once again for, uh, for such a... Uh, we're going to continue this thought actually next week as we're going to look at Psalm 78 a little bit more. 
Right, so thank you for a good evening, good time together. And with that being said, you are dismissed. Be careful going home. And thank you for changing. We go back.